Hi, it's time for another verb of the day. Today's verb is yawn. And this verb was suggested by the viewer Luis in Nicaragua. And so I just want to say a quick thank you for this great suggestion. Now, let's take a moment and look at some of the definitions or the ways that we use this verb. The most common way to see or hear the verb yawn used means to involuntarily open one's mouth wide and inhale deeply. So it might be something a little like this. <sighs> right? So I'm opening my mouth and I'm, I'm inhaling. And this is most commonly done when people are sleepy or tired. It might also be done because someone is bored. They're not very interested in what's happening or what they're experiencing. Now, I will point out, as I demonstrated that, I did this on purpose, so that wasn't involuntary. But for most people, this is just something that happens. It might not feel like you cannot control it. And in fact, you might see someone else do this, and it can cause many people to mimic or do that exact same action as well. Now, a second and related way to use the verb yawn can mean to say or utter something in a very tired or weary way. Okay? I have seen this verb used in literature. So uh, the author many times is describing how someone is speaking or maybe how they're answering a question. And um, so it might be something like she yawned a no. Right? So she's saying something in a very tired way. A third way to use the verb yawn can mean to uh, be very large and wide. So this is typically describing some type of space or opening. Again, I've seen this used uh, in literature, in storytelling. Uh, the writers or authors are trying to convey to their readers that something is, is very large and wide. So it might be something like the chasm yawned, uh, again, to help us envision that very wide open space. Right now, it's important to know that yawn is a regular verb. To make the progressive form of this verb, all you need to do is add ing to form yawning. The past tense and participle forms of this verb can be made by adding ed. Our base verb, yawn, n, ends in a voiced n sound. This means the ed ending is just going to make a d sound. So we're not going to add an extra syllable as we say it. It should sound just like this, yawned, yawned, okay? Now, you might be happy to know there are no additional phrasal verbs that we need to study or discuss. So we can move on and do a little bit of verb tense practice with our verb of the day. Today, we're going to talk about the simple present and the simple future. Let's start with the simple present. We use this verb tense to talk about our habits and routines. So these might be actions that repeat again and again. It's also used to talk about facts. The thing that can make the simple present a little difficult is that you have to pay attention to your subject. In the affirmative or in a positive sentence, you're going to use a subject. And if that subject is I, you, we, or they, then you just use this base verb with no special endings, right? So no suffix here. Okay? But if your subject is he, she, or it, so one man, one woman, one thing, then you need to add an S to the end of the verb. And you can see that in my example sentence here. He yawns every time he sees someone else yawn. Okay? So here we might be discussing an, an action that repeats, or this could also be considered a fact. Right? Just He is the type of person that is going to mimic this action. Now, if we want to make a negative sentence in the simple present, uh, again, we must pay attention to our subject. If our subject is I, you, we, or they, we're going to use do not and then the base verb. 
Another way to do this would be to combine do not into the contraction don't, and then we still just use the base verb. But if our subject is he, she, or it, we're going to use does not, and then the base verb, or doesn't. I always like to point out to my students, notice I'm not adding an S to the end of the verb here in the negative. So an example of a negative sentence might be, giraffes don't yawn. Now, uh, this sentence is said as a factual uh, piece of information. Uh, I believe there was a researcher who watched and studied uh, giraffes for a, an exper uh, a really long period of time, uh, consistently, I think once at least for 35 hours straight, and never saw this type of action. I think it was something unique uh, compared to other mammals. So now let's talk about making a yes or no question in the simple present. To do this, we start with do or does. Whichever form matches our subject, that subject comes next, then we use the base verb. Again, notice I'm not adding an S to the end of my verb. The only time I'm adding an S to the end of the verb is in affirmative or positive sentences when the subject is he, she, or it. Here's my last simple present example. Do you yawn while in class? Right. So here's a question about your habit or your routine. Okay. Now, I know sometimes my students do, and I want to say most teachers are, are understanding. I know I have many students who work overnight and then they come to class in the morning. They've been awake for a very long time. I am not offended by it, but... Some people can be, so uh, it can be something to try and catch or cover so that others don't see it. <laughs> but now let's move on and talk a little bit about the simple future. Today we're going to focus on making sentences with will. Will is commonly used when people are making predictions or promises. Um, it can be used with offers as well. It's a little less common to hear it with plans. Um, but I think my examples today are going to connect most to that idea of predictions. But let's talk about how we make positive or affirmative sentences. First, we're going to begin with our subject. And here, it doesn't matter what our subject is. What comes next is always will, our modal word, and then the base verb. So again, no suffixes here. No S, no I-N-G, no E-D. So, let's take a look at an affirmative example. No one will yawn while reading this story. Okay, so, here, someone is describing that they find something to be really interesting, right? They're suggesting they're not going to feel tired or bored, right? They're going to want to keep turning the pages to find out what happens in this particular uh, story. Now let's talk about making a negative sentence in the simple future. To do this, we start with our subject, we use will not, and then the base verb. Sometimes what can be confusing about the negative is the contraction form of will not. That's won't, W-O-N apostrophe T. We say that with a long O sound. Let's take a look at an example sentence. Wall Street won't yawn at the company's big announcement. So here really is suggesting they're going to pay attention, right? There's going to be action. This isn't going to be something that, oh, I'm bored with it. They're going to be interested. Finally, let's look at making a yes or no question in the simple future. To do this, I start with will, I use my subject, and then the base verb. You can see that in the example. Will I yawn while watching this movie? Right? So maybe I'm asking a, a friend who's already seen it and kind of wanting to know, did they find it interesting or oh, am I going to be bored with it? Now let's move on and talk about some words that are related to our verb. And the first word we're going to talk about is just the noun form of this word. So exact same spelling and the exact same pronunciation. The noun yawn can have a couple different meanings. One would be to describe that reflex of opening our mouth and inhaling, right? The oh, kind of thing. 
So an example of this might be, the baby has such big yawns. And I have to say, that's so cute. I don't know if you, you see it, but generally when uh, we see little ones uh, yawning, uh, it's pretty entertaining. <laughs> A second way yawn gets used as a noun is to refer to something that is considered to be very boreous or tedious. It's going to take a lot of time or energy, um, and it's just not all that interesting. So an example of this might be, that movie was such a yawn. Right? This is not a compliment. <laughs> it's another way of saying, I was bored while watching the movie. Another related word here is the noun yawner. This is going to have about the same meaning um, as our second definition of yawn. So a yawner is something that is considered to be very boring or extremely boring. An example of this, that last game was a yawner. Right. So, could be referring to uh, any type, type of uh, sports competition here, but it was just something we didn't find interesting, right? For whatever reason, maybe one team got out to a, a really big lead early and it was obvious who was going to win, right? That might seem boring to some. Another related word you might encounter is the adjective yawn full. This can mean that something uh, is causing yawns. And again, many times it's due to boredom. An example of this, a 10-year-old would find that movie yawnful, right? So here, again, someone is being pretty critical in suggesting this uh, movie is not interesting. Last word we'll talk about today is the, another adjective, it's yawny. This can mean that something is characterized by or is producing a lot of yawns. So an example of this might be, I've been so tired and yawny this morning. Right? Maybe this happens to you where you're starting your day and, oh, oh, right? And you repeat that action again and again. Thank you so much for watching today's video. And thanks, Luis, for the suggestion. Have a great day, everybody.